Uh, so welcome. Uh, actually, we don't have DeFi doctor Alex, who is usually leading our spaces, and uh, so we have somehow stand by uh, him. Uh, so we we can say hello to to our friend, uh, extraordinary expert on speaking. Uh, and today we have a special guest. We have Martin from Rockaway uh, Labs uh, and Steak and Lux. Uh, uh, our validator and guys, please can you introduce yourself and say a few words about uh, your experience, especially in Cosmos uh, and how uh, are you connected with our blockchain? <laughs> Martin, right, so to... I'm happy to start. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Martin. I'm the CTO of uh, the labs at Rockaway X. So we're a team of uh, about eight builders now that has uh, focused from the outset we're very young we've been in the industry for for a year been around cosmos and we immediately got interested in staking and using staking or using tokens uh, as a way to improve or maintain blockchain health so all our products observatory stake bar smart delegation app has re have revolved uh, around this topic so we're excited to be here today uh, to talk about um, how this is working out with uh, chain for energy yeah, I'm Zach Kruzuchak here. I'm here today with um, Stigma Lex. Um, we are a team of two people. We are validator on, on several chains. Um, Cosmos already since the beginning, um, got all the Juno airdrops, Osmo airdrops. So super experience in, in Cosmos in general. Started my crypto journey early 2017 and uh, also started validating in Chain for Energy. Um, super hyped. Uh, about everything uh, uh, cool projects and yeah happy to be here and uh, thank you for for the chance to speaking here again cool thank you guys and we shouldn't forget about our team uh, we have uh, Dominic uh, Skrobacz our CEO uh, and Michał Adamski Dominic can you tell a few words like uh, for this session <laughs> about myself i introduced myself multiple times so yeah you know, just, you know some warm up let's say <laughs> okay so basically i will just uh I, i'm very curious of this program so that's why i joined this uh this session i think this is uh something exceptional that was created by you guys i'm uh super super interested and uh happy that we we were able to 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 generate something guys. and i'm very curious of the feedback of other validators because in my opinion at the end of the day this could create a very good quality in, in chain and it's like uh, hard to compare to any anyone so yeah let's keep working on this and yeah i'm happy to to hear discussion and i will try to join to it also okay thanks so let's start uh, our q a and guys, the idea is to have some uh, questions which we prepared uh, for for uh, this uh, session, uh, you know, to explain what is the, the rationale behind how we designed the, the, the program. And then uh, I suppose I know that you have a lot of questions. So the, the stage will, will be yours and you could ask any question if what you want. And so first warm up question about uh, replicated security and you know that the, one of the last proposal which was passing the cosmos ecosystem and you know people are talking about that a lot especially in the in the, uh, in the twitter and guys what is your opinion about that so who goes first maybe this time zach <laughs> So I think replicated security is is one of the of the key milestones in, in the history of Cosmos, especially if you if you look back last year, like with the Atom 2.0 proposal, which basically also had replicated security in there, but it was just like a proposal that had just too, too many components in there. And let, now with replicated security, um, like new projects can come and rent security from the hub. And really bring like this added value uh, and value accrual to the to the cosmos hub. So I think with that um, we will enter a new area of the of the cosmos hub and the cosmos ecosystem in general. And we we're, we're gonna see how it um, plays out in the end with Stride as the first consumer chain, and then Neutron uh, uh, gonna come too. And I think more and more chains will will enter that as well. So it's gonna be really interesting. Cool. Thanks. Martin? Yeah. So, so we've had um, 
we run the bare metal podcast as a, as a way to talk to people uh, you know around the infrastructure ecosystem in um, in in cosmos and we i ask people about replicated security quite a bit and you know i would just like to summarize the, the main gist that that you know i I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of people which is <clears throat> interchain security um very interesting idea it's a way for the cosmos hub to gain usefulness inside the ecosystem to become a player to use its strength uh its its stake tokens to secure other chains on the other hand replicated security is the very first version of how to implement this and the this version requires basically all the validators um, on the cosmos hub to participate which um, might not be fortuitous now we're going to my take sort of right it, there's already a version two planned out, right? Which is more flexible, where specific subsets of validators can be picked to, you know, secure secure target chains. But what the uh, what replicated security requires is now everybody who is a, who is a validator will have to run additional nodes uh, that are uh, that are actually certain no full nodes in these other uh, uh, you know blockchains. And it's not clear to me whether there's been any prep work or whether it's whether it's um, whether it's been prepared, all the validators have been prepared to do this. Some of the validators that are participating in the Cosmos Hub are smaller operations, right? Now they're going to be asked, like, either you're going to run all these chains that pass by governance, but we're talking uh, at, at this point, I guess, up to five chains, right, uh, in the very first version, or, you know, your atom's going to get slashed. So in my mind, I'd be worried about how this affects uh, the longer tail of the validators uh, that are now active on Cosmos Help and you know, are, are these guys not gonna get kicked out? Because the, the rules have been changed uh, after this proposal, right? What was previously required of you as a validator has now been multiplied um, because the, the chain as a whole voted on this. And now somehow you're, you're dragged into this. So my worry would be like, you know, what's gonna happen to the validators from rank say 90 below, you know, 90 to 175. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So thanks, thanks guys. Like, honestly speaking, you know, it's like uh, we could uh, talk here like for one hour, even more about replicated security. So it was, as I mentioned, just warm up question. Uh, th thanks for sharing your thoughts. And right now, let's move to the subject and let's start from the observatory zone. It's like the tool which uh, is quite new in, in, in the ecosystem. And I remember, Martin, when we've met. Uh, at the airport, uh, Calcun in Mexico, uh, flying back from Cosmoverse, and you know, you, you told me, okay, Greg, we have such such nice tool. Uh, it would be great to have you on on that, and 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 so on. And it was like the starting of the discussion. Honestly speaking, I didn't understand at that point what does it mean. Uh, so maybe you can explain what is the, you know the tool about. <laughs> Right. And um, yeah, I remember this conversation pretty well, actually. So we were in the queue waiting to like pass through the, you know, the, the, the passport control. And I was like, hey, we've got this observatory thing. I was just presenting it. And it was it was clear to me that, you know, in the queue, I'm not likely going to be able to explain all of this. But, you know, I, I like that you seemed interested and you're like, hey, that's something that, you know, I'll have to look into this later. So and here we are. Right. So that's uh, that's a, that's a fun journey. But how did we get here? So the labs. The, the 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 labs team actually started operating last march uh this would be like the inception we started with two people uh, you know at scaled up from there our very first job was to analyze um the security of smart contracts for another arm of rock x which just like we just liquidity providing so they would make money by by providing liquidity to DeFi projects right and essentially farming yield or like getting 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 yield in return for this early liquidity and their question was always is it safe Right. Can we can mm -hmm. we? so we started by looking at the smart contract layer, but they were interested in 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 quite a few uh, different um, ecosystems. So we were looking at things on Celo, right? There were DeFi contracts on Ethereum. So this got us interested in you know the underlying security. So what about the L1 below that? Right. Uh, it's not just the smart contract layer. It's also mm -hmm. like all these computers running running and executing the smart contracts. So we started very early on realizing okay, there are, you know quite a bit. Uh, quite a few blockchains surrounding the ecosystem. It's not clear whether anybody is, you know, really gathering or, or trying to understand what the pros and cons of each of these ecosystem projects is doing. It we stumbled onto, we stumbled onto Cosmos very early on via Terra. One of the first jobs that we had was to build a monitoring system for Terra, which incidentally helped Rocco AX pull out the liquidity before everything went down because our dashboards was starting to show uh, show warning signs. But this was so so Terra as a as a as a project sort of financially didn't work out but i think it's a very well respected project on the building side 
right? Terraform Labs, very well respected team, mm -hmm. have built a lot of stuff. So we learned a lot by analyzing, looking at their smart contract structure of Anchor, and looking at you know, and then we were curious, hey, how does the, you know the Terra blockchain? This got us into sort of thinking more about the Cosmos ecosystem. We're thinking, okay, we need to. Uh, we need to understand more about this. And we started building out a framework. First, we built a tiny little piece of code that just scanned the blockchain and it returned some metrics. And then we said, okay, we need to keep running this. We need to get we need to get the data. We need to expand the functionality. And I guess like long story short, what you what you get, you know, when we started out, we were thinking, okay, what are the most important things we think about this blockchain? Well, is it producing blocks? Is it signing? Is there, you know, is there a governance? Uh, is, is it working? Are the validators actually voting? Is everybody engaged? Uh, are they really distributed? Are they dispersed? You know, so like all these things coalesce into sort of one framework that we're showing now as, as the observatory where we're, and we've focused exclusively on Cosmos and uh, we're looking at, you know, a lot of the chains around their listing chains basically every month um, adding them on board. And the, the question that we want to answer here is, is, is really how does each validator contribute to the overall health of the blockchain? So the blockchain score that you see in the observatory, I think this is a very important feature of how we do this, is actually a weighted score of all the validators that's weighted by their stake. So the more stake you have, the more your score impacts the chain. And because, because of this construction, you can actually tell which validators are leading the chain, right? Which ones are pushing the score up and which ones are dragging the score down. So this is something where we, we think, in our view, this makes the score actionable. Right in the sense of I can I can look at the validators which are pushing the sub dragons down and I can show paths to improvement or I can give kudos to the validators that are doing really well. So this whole idea was can we somehow quantify in a biased way, in an opinionated way? You know, it's always going to be um, th th we have never made any representation that we can. This is the blockchain score. This is the only thing that's ever going to matter. No, we're focusing on metrics, um, and we, we've we've set out. Uh, there's also a white paper which of these things we think are important and thus which are captured in the observatory right so early on uh, you know when 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 talking to c4e we felt that that they they are sort of um, resonating with this view which is where the, the party came from this but in a, in a nutshell this is where the observatory started and you know it's 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 all there documented for people to have a look at if, if they so desire You're muted, Greg. Can't hear anything. Greg, you are muted. Still. Okay. Do you hear me? Okay. Sorry. So, uh, mm, so let let me share a few things about uh, observatory. What is actually important from my perspective, and then we move for, uh, forward to the smart uh, delegation app, and uh, we'll talk about the difference between. Uh, Two of them, and actually, what I like and, and uh, what what we are focused on is like uh, you know the. By the way, Martin, some improvement proposal. It would be great to see those uh, scoring at the at very first page because right now I have to go to each of them and check. <laughs> but uh, you know, more or less where we are, uh, and so right now we are the we have the highest score, and we'll talk about that uh, later on how to improve that. Uh, but definitely, you know, this Nakamoto coefficient is very important uh, factor, which I'm checking, and we are at the edge of having free ISPs here. I hope so that it will happen soon. And what I like, uh, uh, honestly speaking, from the validator perspective, if you go to validators uh, and take, uh, you know, you know, uh, for instance, Amona. Amona is quite high, but, but uh, the scenario ana analysis, this is the tool which I like a, a lot. And, and you guys, you can simulate, you know, if you change country or ASP, uh, ISP and so on, uh, how the, the, it will influence uh, the, 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 the overall score. And this is uh, this, this tool I, I like, I like a, a lot. Okay. Okay, uh, so this is regarding uh, observatory, uh, and then the question is because uh, in our uh, strategic result delegation program we are using. Greg, smart, if, I, uh, if I if I can still one one more point to this, right? So so I feel like this mm -hmm. needs to be said. What's what was most heartening when we started working with you guys on the observatory to me, um, 
that you know before we had any smart delegation before anything we you remember in december you guys said hey can you list us you know we listed you on the staging build it wasn't even public and we started you know scanning this these chains and the score at that time was was pretty you know was pretty bad there was a lot of validators who were in ovh and like what's impressed me is pressing me most honestly speaking is not that you guys have a high a highest score now i mean this this that's great but the change uh in the last three months that you guys have accomplished like given the feedback with the metrics you guys have pushed relentlessly and helped that you know we're trying to keep kept trying to improve this metric and this is the result right so this mm -hmm. isn't like chain for energy is is has been you know has had it easy and it's just like oh you know this score is nice this that's that's absolutely not true um there there were concentrated massively concentrated massively concentrated validators in some isps and you guys have done a lot of hard work you know communicating with these guys and asking them to move around with the observer providing feedback to you guys right so we were we were refreshing if you remember some of some of the times daily like we we're refreshing these scans and telling you guys yeah there's there's progress you know we've had these these telegram um sort of conversations so what's what was most impressive to me as use of the software is like you guys were really checking it and using it to inform your communication and decisions and a lot of work has been done to get to 88 right so so this isn't a default or this isn't somehow oh we're lucky to have a good score there's a there's tons of hard work behind this. so i just wanted to point this out before i get to the smart delegation prior before any capital allocation you know ideas it's just like just having the data there it, you guys have pushed really hard and like you know all due respect for that that was i was uh that i thought it was a fantastic job yeah thanks thanks uh martin uh, it's it's like uh hand on my hand uh uh, and uh, so this is actually uh, something what uh, what we are thinking from the day one because you know uh, we could say okay let's don't, don't don't care about right now and we could focus about that uh, later on but unfor unfortunately it could be too late because we could have the situation that uh, we have uh, concentration in big validators or some countries and then uh, it will be extremely hard to to fix it out so it's better to to to, to care about that uh, since day one it's 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 really hard honestly speaking because uh, we are allocating uh, maybe not a huge amount of resources but definitely we are thinking about that uh, heavily working with zach uh, he's helping us uh, with his experience uh, how it looks like in other chains and so on uh, but we are, we believe that uh, if we do that right now, then we will be ready, ready to secure the future of energy network. Uh, so this is actually what we are talking about. So our chain, I believe, will be uh, securing uh, you know millions of billions of con contracts transactions uh, in the energy market. Okay, so let's go further. Let's, Smart delegation program, smart de delegation app. Martin, tell us what is the difference, uh, and uh, please explain that to 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 validators that it is clear. Right. So, the difference between the observatory and the smart delegation app. The observatory doesn't support um, any use of tokens to uh, you know build out the ecosystem. The observatory is a data product. Its job is to scan the chains and make that data available for everybody so everybody can share have sort of like a shared view of what is this you know what is this network looking like from the perspective of, of, of the observatory right the smart delegation program was is an entirely different product that we built to support foundations and our insight was as follows uh, you know foundation delegation programs are always very difficult to enact they're a manual people have to spend a lot of effort um building some Google Sheets, trying to score things, uh, and then you know come up with some allocations finally. And then someone has to go and do those allocations. And usually, they never change. And we thought, look, we've got the observatory here. How about if we were able to automate part of this, part of this process, make it make and design a framework for foundations to express their wishes, right? So the Smart Delegation app is really a way for the foundations to declare a policy Look, this is how we would like our tokens to be allocated. These are the perspectives that, that we find valuable. Make that policy public so it's, it can be seen by validators, can be examined. And then the, the, the policy is compared with the data from the observatory, which still feeds the data into Smart Delegation App. And as a result, like a new scoring is computed that's different from the observatory. 
And that scoring reflects how the foundation would like the chain to develop, right? Because it's so, so in, in our mind, this is a capital allocation tool. The foundation is charged with developing the ecosystem and it's got tokens as a tool to do that. And we want to help the foundations be as transparent as possible and, and be as be as efficient as possible in allocating uh, you know, a part of those tokens uh, to develop this, the, the, the blockchain ecosystem, to support those validators which are helping it you know, decentralize and, and um, uh, just general, um, do well processing, uh, signing blocks and, and just keeping the chain active. Cool, thanks. And, and maybe one comment here because uh, the rest, I hope so that we don't have this situation, but to, we had some situation that some validators weren't scored correctly because uh, they had uh, the infrastructure which uh, hid uh, the complexity of the node and so on. And uh, and actually, uh, guys, uh, it's very important to, to mention that here, but uh, we shouldn't lower the security to be scored at high level. Uh, so you should ask uh, 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 observatory rockaway team to, to fix it. Uh, and I hope so that it it will it can be achieved. Uh, uh, if not, uh, I'm open for the discussion. Uh, you know how to to you know to do delegation in different way, maybe manual or whatever. But the important is that we should uh, keep in mind that this is all about security, decentralization, not uh, having the highest score. Right, I fully agree with that, and this is actually, I think, this is a super complex discussion, and it, it could take us hours on, on, you know, what the observatory should be able to track and how how the interaction with validators should look like. Now, I can give you a very short view from my mind. I think that the there should be a clear interface between the observatory and the validator, where the the nodes which are actually sending packets to the public network are the ones that, that we should be tracking because those are the ones through which the votes enter the network. Well, I'll give you an example. If you have a validator that only has two private links to two Sentry nodes and the Sentry nodes are sending data to the network, then our view of your infrastructure would be those two Sentry nodes, right? There, there's a hidden validator behind this. Now, it feels to me, if as a validator, if you, if you want, you should be able to hide parts of your infrastructure if that makes you feel safer. As a result, though, it is entirely possible that the foundation cannot see, you know, what you're bringing to this network. It's unable to ascertain that. So you may be eligible for less of a foundation delegation. So there, there's, if if you're using this metrics-driven approach, hiding yourself might have a have a price. I still think that option should be on the table, and maybe there are some validators who are not who are just community-driven. They're not interested in any foundation funds, and they just want to be, you know, funded by somebody else. So it feels to me like I don't want to, you know, force you and drill into in, try and drill inside your infrastructure if, if you know that was possible in some, um, in some cases triangulate I don't know you know packet flight times and, and look at differences when the packets are exiting the sentry nodes. I mean we do a lot of analysis. We haven't got into uh, you know these these ideas of how we how we scan how we scan the network. But in my mind philosophically, you know th this the foundation. What does what does smart delegation program do? It allows the foundation to design to, to define some metrics and say, look, this is what we're looking for. This is what we'd like to reward. This is where we want to send tokens. Now it feels to me you as a validator should be able to say, look, I'm not interested in this game. I want to, you know, I want to be hidden somewhere and I, I don't want any foundation like it's from us, you know, don't do that. Yeah. Or you should be able to say, okay, you know, um, I want to showcase my infrastructure. I want to showcase my metrics. Uh, you know, I want to be visible here. This is this is sort of my take on this. And then, as a you know, uh, you can demonstrate your uh, you can demonstrate your scoring, and and the smart delegation program will uh, will will then sort of, sort of take all of that into account. So we feel like that's a conversation we should be having with validators. And the default is what you see in the observatory, right? So the default is, as I'm saying, we're looking for where those packets are entering the network, and those are the relevant nodes for us, right? So you might have other hidden infrastructure. Uh, behind that, and that is up to you. Like, hey, do you want to also reveal that your validator is, I don't know, in Angola, or do you, if it's behind Sentry nodes and it's legitimately like hidden from the traffic, nobody would be able to see it, or not? Um, you know, this is this is. Let's let's go and chat about this. Like, let's 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 look at the the, the pros and cons. That would be my that would be my take on this. Cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Martin. One more question here, because this is actually something what uh, was warning uh, 
I actually I had this, this discussion a few times back then uh, about running RPC uh, uh, API node at the same uh, hardware as validator. Uh, and actually during analysis with Zach, we realized that there are many validators who, who reported those nodes running and uh, thanks to, to, to one of validator, uh, I got the feedback that in most in most cases they are running at the same uh, IP or, or hardware. Of course, it's not 100% sure, but uh, it seems like that. And, uh, so my point is that uh, I prefer to have less public good versus uh, you know promoting such uh, such beha behavior that uh, people are trying to catch as much as possible points and uh, then lowering the, the network security and what is your uh, opinion about that so so my opinion on running rpc opening an rpc port to a validator node uh is definitely please don't do that uh, I mean, this the, the, this only increases the risk, right? A, a ideal an RPC node should be a full node uh, that has a defined you know history that, that you know, that's advertised and can be used, and it ideally does not share infrastructure with the validator node. So I also think that even if you have on the same machine two processes, one of them is a validator node, the second one is an RPC. I still think that's dangerous. Like the RPC node can be overloaded with queries that are, you know, if you look into the Cosmos SDK, it's open source, you can see which queries take a lot of time and which overload the system. And you can just, you could just start banging on the on the node. So this is definitely something we, we would not recommend. And if we were scoring this, if we were scoring this, we would actually negatively score an open RPC port on a validator node. We do not do this now, just to be clear, but we can see it. Right. I mean, there is this very remote possibility. Look, uh, you know, a validator could come and try to convince us it's just an open port and it's routed somewhere else. It's just, you know, why? Let's 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 hold those that RPC infrastructure clear separate. So there is uh, there is at least one validator uh, inside here that has uh, that has a setup where they have a validator node and they, there's an RPC node inside Hetzner because you know it's 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 cheaper to run uh, hardware inside Hetzner if it's an RPC node that's not signing any packets. I feel that like I would feel there's less risk from you know Hetzner taking enforcement action against such a node, and that would make sense to me. It's a completely separate DC. It's not doing mm -hmm. validation. It's not taking part in securing the network, and it's cheap to run the RPC over there. I mean, like it's you know it it feels like the best of both worlds. It's going to be cheaper inside Hetzner. Please run your validator node ideally somewhere else. So you know you don't all get firewalled like Solana did, but um, yeah, RPCs please you know separate infrastructure. Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. Because this this uh, you know popped out uh, uh, last uh, actually a few hours back, and so I communicated that. But we will rather prefer uh, higher security versus you know uh, uh, lowering that for some some extra points. Okay, Zach, question for you right now. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, about you know the smart delegation program because I know that you were engaged as well with Martin. Uh, uh, you know, at, at you know designing that I don't know designing, but at least you know we we're working on 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 KPIs and how they can can influence the overall network score. Can you tell more about your view for uh, for uh, for this uh, you know? As, especially objective, uh, uh, you know, KPI scoring. Yeah, I think I think what we have to to say here to to make it also like clear and transparent is like there we have a differentiation between like objective and subjective ones, right? So the objective one is everything that you can like automatically grasp um, and like automatically score as well, right? And the subjective one is like parameters like YouTube contributions. You can say like, hey, I'm running, I'm, I'm doing YouTube videos and I'm running YouTube channel. Um, you can say that and you can maybe do that for the first time in the first week and then like don't do any video for, for a year. So that's something you have to check, right? And it's like not not easily to, to check automatically and um, not like with any programs. So like that has to be manual. Um, so therefore there's a differentiation about that um yeah and for the parameters we just we just looked like for the parameters which make the most sense um is it is it on an objective one like for for all the uptime um is it for for something else and then the same for the uh, subjective one there we selected uh parameters that like enforces the vision more or less of the foundation 
and like helps the the foundation delegate uh, foundation to to uh, reach the goals the the foundation has. Okay, okay, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, okay, and uh, right now uh, maybe some you know general question to to, to Martin. Maybe other chains are, are listening. Uh, uh, we'll listen that uh, later on. Uh, what is your advice uh, for going further? You know, to have uh, even 100 uh, uh, scoring at observatory. How, how, what you would suggest uh, validators and and chains uh, how to how to uh, improve? So, so the biggest point drop off uh, uniformly uh, across all blockchains is due to concentration of stake inside uh you know specific entities so the the entities that matter most are countries and internet service providers and basically if, if you open up chain for energy today you see that you know two the two top um isps are you know it's heads there with 17 percent and and ovh with with almost 17 percent the the way to to push that score even further up would be to reduce the reliance on these dcs so uh, look, all we have set up the scoring system inside the observatory to be pretty conservative, right? So it's asking, in order to get a hundred percent score, here's what 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 a chain would have to do. Number one, have good block signing, right? So you know the validators can't be missing too many blocks, otherwise their score gets lowered and the aggregate score, you know, gets lowered. But as to get full score on the country uh, dimension you'd have to have at most 5% stake in any one country. I am fully, you know, you can criticize this, say that's asking too much, fully understand. Uh, we, we've set this up to be really conservative. So you'd have to be, first of all, you'd have to be 20 countries in the first place, right? And then the mm -hmm. second thing, if you are in the 20 countries, you have to equalize, like really try to, move. so it's best if you're in say 30 countries, so you can really spread out sort of nicely, right? But that would be the criteria for a country. For ISP, it's the same idea, right? And the if if the you know if you see a, if you see a chain that's that's in the 60s or low 70s, uh, odds are that the first ISP or the first country is like very close to 30 percent. Like as long as if you if you have 25 percent of stake inside one internet service provider, every validator that's inside that ISP gets ISP score zero because they're in a very crowded location that that's 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 bad for the chain right so because if if that isp firewalls the traffic like the, all that 25 percent is going and that's really close to sort of hitting the healing levels of cosmos you can't jail anybody if if you if you take 33 percent down you know the chain can't heal itself so around 25 we get really really nervous so that and that's and it's and it's way below 33 it's still way below 33 right but mm -hmm. um we think that with so so you would have to have five percent stake at most inside any one country inside any one isp and if you do that plus you're able to keep signing blocks because that's the other thing right you could be wonderfully decentralized being tasmania but your validators aren't you know that their latency is too high they're not signing any blocks you need to increase rounds and then your users can't use the chain because you know their transactions are being processed that's not great so obviously the the score is is, is a weighted construction and it, what we're asked what we're trying to you know, help the chains achieve is be really decentralized, but you know, still keep that keep, keep that performance. So to get a hundred, you'd be up to five percent everywhere. You'd be signing blocks, and when we get the governance scoring back into the into production, it also means like getting validators to to really vote, right? To be to be to participate in the proposals. Cool. Thanks, uh, Zach. Any thoughts from your side? I mean, like Martin is explaining that really, really well. I always enjoy like listening to him. He's, I think he told <laughs> <called> everything. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, I, one comment from my site. I remember we've been in Lisbon at uh, Staking Summit. If I remember well, it was at that time when uh, Hertner uh, kicked off uh, uh, Solana uh, validators. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy, and you know, it's, it was like the the coincidence of timing because we are starting uh, onboarding validators at that time we were fully focused on having validators it was the time when we weren't uh, sure that uh, we'll have 45 because it was the you know the breaking point for us to, to start uh, uh, inflation right now we have uh, 
75 active validators and how many in the queue right now it's like more or less 20 in the, in the queue so i'm extremely happy about that and again i'm always trying to, to repeat that thank you guys uh, very much for supporting us and building the future of energy market okay so guys uh, so uh, little points that i want to add to martin like i i think it's it's really necessary to 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 have the balance uh, between location and the the service and the cost of it right like obviously there's a reason why everyone is using ovh and hetzner right and in the most cases it's it's the case of of price especially here in the bear market where where a lot of validators not make any kind of money or revenue uh in in this market so everyone goes there because it's cheap and it's it's maybe even working the best right uh, I, for myself, did even like a test with an internet service provider and, and tried to, to set up a node in Australia and in Singapore. And I tried like, okay, hey, let's try to like go somewhere else. But unfortunately, even there, like, especially if you set up IBC routers, you have a, a slightly worse uh, um, latency and therefore you can't perform as good as the others, which then also pay less for that, right? So I think it's necessary to find a balance here and to, to really reward these people who, who try to enforce like decentralization because um, as, as Martin said, it can be really dangerous if it's like really crowded on an ISP or a location. But let's say uh, we, we saw that already like with, with, with Hetzner, but you see, you can also see that maybe on a country level where like then a country comes and say like, yeah, validating is not allowed. Everyone who runs a validator in this country like that's some kind of, of lawsuit or something. And this could really endanger the chain. And that's what we all want to avoid in sake of decentralization, right? So uh, I think it's, it's important to find the balance and to incentivize that people that really wants to help. It's a, it's a really good point you bring up, Zach, and thank you for that. The, the And that's the objective. I think I'm, what I'm hoping is when, you know, Chain for Energy rolls out the smart delegation app, you'll be able to see in, in, the, in the system how stake is allocated and the the very objective of this scoring system and also of the smart delegation app is to fund moves out of those crowded places right so what you should be able to see using for example the scenario planner or just looking at you know what are how are validators being awarded um stake based on the based on the comp computational algorithm that, that we have in there is that validators who move out get significantly more stake because we're expecting those costs to rise right obviously the the nominals the nominal situation is everybody's going to try and look for the cheapest ISP, and that makes sense. Like we get that. So the entire objective of tracking this and trying to provide reputation to those guys who are going against this, which is hard work, get them those those good scores. And the smart delegation app is is a layer on top, which is trying to get them funds, trying to get them stake to move out. Cool. Uh, okay, guys, maybe some. Uh let's say uh cool down question uh, uh you know you maybe uh, you should tell us uh, martin about uh, gateway event which is coming uh it's, it's scheduled on on uh, june uh, and what we can expect uh, from this event uh, we are going to be there and we, we are, we're going to be sponsor sponsor at this this event and but uh, if you could tell us more about uh, what what do you plan there yeah, so Gateway uh, is a developer-focused conference in Cosmos. Last year, it was a very successful event in Prague. This year, it's in Prague again by popular demand. Everybody asked us not to move it. And it's going to be the same venue that was very professional, live AV feeds. Uh, but the, um, the the most interesting thing was, uh, you know, we did a lot of work trying to make sure there, is a, there are a lot of developers. And by that, I mean, we, we, we actually got GitHub, uh, you know, repos, and we're looking at, do these people write code? So it was a developer focused conference and we're definitely uh, going to want to connect with all builders in the Cosmos ecosystem and make sure uh, they have enough interesting uh, program to attend. So we'll definitely be doing uh, workshops on the on the observatory and on the smart television program explaining how this works. And uh, I do know C4E has some interesting ideas what to do there, but uh, you know, it's uh, I, they're not mine to give away. So that's, uh, that's, up, to mm -hmm. <laughs> that's up to you guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's leave Alpha for that next uh, sessions. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, because we, we have to be sure that we'll be able to organize that. And uh, so, uh, but definitely we are planning something, something really, really special. Uh, okay, cool. Actually, we are uh, so excited. Uh, you know, uh, we are living in Poland. It's very close to Prague and uh, uh, even able to drive by, by car. <laughs> Uh, so a good place, uh, you know, it's almost summer, I, it will be warm, so great, great place, great, great time. Uh, so, and this time it's even like, uh, it, it's Saturday till Monday, if I remember well. Uh, that's right, that's right. Uh, it's mm -hmm. the 3rd to the 5th of June, 2023. Okay, okay, cool. So guys, right now, uh, before moving forward to, to, to questions, uh, uh, one update from my side, because, you know, uh, we are moving from the, let's say, subjective way of delegation, which we are doing manually to, to objective. And uh, so it requires a bit time because uh, what I understood from Martin, that uh, a smart delegation app, uh, actually, I should show that I, I, I prepared uh, uh, Tap and forgot to show. Uh, I will show in a second. Requires a specific pool, which uh, will be allocated for that program. Maybe let me show you. Uh, Martin, is it fine for you? You know, it's like. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead and show it. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, of course. Actually, so guys, uh, ta -da! this is actually our alpha. <laughs> how does it looks like? Maybe let me let me log out. And uh, I like the the way how it how we can use that. Uh, here is the, let's say, uh, the, the test pool, which we are using for testing purposes. And you know, you see a chain, chain for energy and you, I can connect uh, with my wallet. Uh, you don't see that, but uh, each time when I'm logging, I'm using uh, Kepler. So the, 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 uh, the wallet is connected. And, uh, and uh, this is how it looks like. And, uh, so you see the, the, the difference between observatory and smart delegation app and uh, what we have here. So let's start uh, from uh, uh, actually um, the pool itself. Uh, so here we can define the pool which will be used for this smart delegation, uh, strategic reserve delegation program. And actually we have to, to separate this pool. This is actually what I wanted to explain. So through proposal four, which is uh, issued on Monday, we'll do the upgrade and this pool will be, a, we will be able to use the pool for the program after the, the upgrade. So uh, so we have some kind of the transition so that we will start with eligibility, early uh, supporters, delegation, and then move forward to the uh, objective and subjective. So so we, we need like more or less two weeks for, to 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 update that uh, so and then we have here 40 million of tokens uh, but here is like uh, we have put one million as a max for this testing uh, then uh, if we have here um, you see and if if we say that uh, we wanted to allocate this this uh, it's 100 k sorry 100 k we can simulate how it will look uh, uh, the, the, the delegation. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello. Hello. Oh, for uh, instance, uh, there are validators who has uh, more uh, delegated than previous guys. Sorry, and, uh, excuse me, uh, the screen doesn't look very clear. Any chance of making it full screen? Uh, it's not full screen. I think it's your internet connection that doesn't show it clean. Oh, okay. Thank you, Zofa. No mm -hmm. worries. Maybe uh, when you pin uh, the screen, you you can change uh, layout uh, in in Google Meet. Uh, it will be it will be better. Okay, I will try. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and then uh, what you have here. And subjective parameters will be provided here. As you said, there are some kind of exams uh, how we can add and we can say, okay, we want to, to allocate uh, to stake lab, uh, like 100 tokens and how long, either forever or some specific uh, time. And then 
this information will be uh, update, updated. And I can, uh, each time I can simulate the situation, as you see here, it shows additional delegation. Maybe I can provide more tokens uh, to see uh, the difference. Okay. Okay. And as you see, uh, even we have some uh, mm, tokens here. Okay. And then we have eligibility. And this is actually the important part. So this is co uh, correlated with eligibility from the strategic reserve delegation program. And we are up, uh, updating that uh, according to what we provided in the proposal number three. For instance, here is 75 and the voting participation. And uh, uh, here is how many, how, what percentage of signet, signed blocks were during last 30 days, last 60, 90 days, and so on. Uh, what are black blacklisted countries, uh, ISPs, uh, validators? So we have this capability to, to update. And what is important to understand that uh, um, SDP, let's say, is tracking that over the time. Uh, Martina, I don't know how how uh, often during the day, but uh, but important is that it it calculates the KPIs over the time over the time. Yeah, four times. Time. Mm -hmm. Ah, four times a day. So similar like uh, like observatory, but in observatory you have a snapshot. Let's say. This is like the, right. the current then, state. You don't see right. history. Mm -hmm. no, that's correct. Oh, so okay. I think important to say is also like with the smart delegation app and what you what we see here with the eligibility and the scoring. Uh, so this is a tool to apply the policy that is already like posted online, right? So it's already live and you can, you can see the eligibility criteria and the scoring. And with this tool, the policy gets like really implemented and gets like uh, automated and scored so like the the foundation and the team don't have to do that manually every day and to to check that every day exactly exactly this is very important and here we have scoring and we can update scoring uh, like commission country isp uh, signed blocks uh, voting participation and we can update them according to to agreed uh, kpis and and then what is important uh, that uh, I can save as a working. Uh, so once I, I change it, then I'm committing. So I like the concept, Martin, like GitHub style. And then what what is important? I pushed Martin to 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 have it ready before we start. We have the public view, so you you can then see uh, how the, the the policy looks like and uh, what are eligibility criteria what is the scoring and how uh, um, it is uh, should be allocated according to to to, uh, to KPIs so this is actually something what I wanted to 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 have ready before we start because uh, um, observatory is different view observatory is like the, the informative like the snapshot of the of the situation uh, the allocation uh, delegation is based on on, on this tool I, if I can add to it, Greg, the you're uh, here only have a hundred thousand C4E uh, engaged uh, in the management, and there are something like uh, ninety three million tokens allocated now. So the 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 token allocations based on the STB are actually the light gray parts, but they're very small. If you can scroll down a little bit, uh, so we can see the bottom right. So there is uh, forty nine Medes and fifty nine Pro Node seventy five. Is being allocated but the allocations are tiny compared to the total amount of tokens here so that's why it's hard to see just wanted to point this out so you'll be able yes. to you'll be able to then see who gets uh, what allocations after the policy is made public so the foundation decides what the policy is it there's you guys have already done um a governance proposal i believe on this and then there is a, a you know this the, you implement the policy into the tool and then the tool computes okay based on this policy what would the distribution of the funds look like and the yeah. public view is is not unauthenticated and any validator can have a look at what the mm -hmm. you know what the what the situation looks like yes cool uh, actually uh, martin so maybe i can show like here show all the changes mm -hmm. and i update i changed to 1 million let's say simulate 
and right. uh, and we see like uh, the changes according to the current state how they look how it looks like that's right that's right mm -hmm. exactly uh, okay guys uh, so right now uh, uh questions so uh what do you well, before we start what, 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 before mm -hmm. we start just, uh, to the questions maybe pointing out that here as i said it's just one million if you're not listed here right now don't worry uh the the, the strategic reserve delegation gonna be more and gonna like involve also more validators and in addition to that you're gonna have the early supporters delegation and also the subjective uh delegation right that i think greg posted earlier on uh, in the validator group yes and mm -hmm. there also um i think uh, a point to mention uh is um a big shout out to pro 75 and cross notes they listed their seed notes and uh also their rpc notes uh and the peers all on the cosmos directory so if you don't uh did that already uh just just list it on the cosmos directory that will be way easier to track and mm -hmm. see contribution to the network and um yeah uh in, in total thank you everyone for, for these applications uh there were like some some validators who really uh put effort in in that application and tried like to fill out information uh, as best as possible you have to understand like if there are like 75 applications or more uh we can't check for every validator like for each point and like re make research and go on their page and then check this and this but it's really, really important every time you like make the application that you fill in every information you have into that column and not just like randomly in, in any column. So like if there is a question asked, please provide this this exact information there uh, and also help us to, to uh, make it easier to, to score you and give you the points. Um, and also another point I just wanted to point out uh, what was really, really important so I think there was like some confusion. Um, if you had a tutorial for how to set up a validator node or RPC node, this all belongs under technical uh, the technical topic, and you got the points here in the technical um, technical sector, uh, for a few points. You didn't get points or. Uh, uh, tutorial because the tutorial is usually uh for the community so like hey how do i stake my chain of energy how do i vote how do i do anything right like a tutorial how to use the chain i'm not like uh from a technical perspective so i just wanted to point that out that there's a differentiation between documentation and the tutorial yeah thanks Zach, for this comment that actually i want to add here because we had a few uh, mm, a few of the few of us uh, pointed here like uh, code contribution or the github uh, uh, proposal and actually my point here was that uh, you know we are building open source solution and if you have uh, technical capabilities and skills we will be more than welcome to uh, uh, more than happy to, to to welcome you to to contribute uh, what we are doing um, and everything what is connected with our blockchain like extension of documentation you know helping us to to develop some features and so on uh, it, it it is great of course i cannot promise you that uh, our technical team will take that into consideration because this is not my call our CTO Pavel Borensky will decide whether it is valuable or not. Uh, but uh, contributing, helping, it is it is great. And actually, even uh, today, I had discussion with Kresnest uh, uh, about you know uh, circulating su supply supply uh, uh, and uh, and 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 actually, I asked him to to issue the the, the ticket because you know in that case. Our team can can verify that. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, uh, and I don't want to have you know endless discussion at Telegram. It's uh, I'm I'm in many topics, uh, and uh, so I'm not able to come back to every one of you and reply to see, uh, every question. If you if you want to to, to contribute, add something. GitHub is your your space. 
Uh, okay, and right now maybe let's let's uh, uh, open stage for questions, guys. Uh, do do we have uh, some uh, questions written, uh, or maybe you'd like to comment something, guys? Time the time is yours. Uh, I do see one question in the chat. Uh, I can I can read it out and answer that if that's mm -hmm. okay. So there's a question from Max that says, "Do I understand right that we're talking about increasing security and at the same time you're forcing to unhide nodes for observatory and decrease security to get foundation delegations?" That's a it's a great question, and I'm ho I was hoping I was uh, saying that's not the case. So mm -hmm. first of all, yes. if you have infrastructure um, that we uh, you know. We're gonna we're gonna scan this from the outside, from the from the network side, and show uh, what we see inside the observatory. So right now you can walk into the observatory, you can look at your own validator, you can see what how the infrastructure is. Now what has happened in this in one particular case is we were showing sentry nodes, and uh, uh, the validator said, "Well, but I you know I do have a validator in a in a, in a my validator node is in a separate country, and would I get a higher score if I?" if i you know if you guys could see that validator node and we said well in that case yes because it is in a country where there's almost nobody else and if you could track it if you could con confirm that it's there yes the score would be higher and this is the conversation we want to have so but it's it, nobody you know we're not asking anybody to re to 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 do that the score was actually pretty good with the two sentry nodes right it wasn't uh, there was a, there was a few points extra but yes if you want to for example let me give like let me you know, create an example in my head. If you want to prove to me that that your validator is is in Singapore, and can you please score me based on my validator in Singapore and not based on the two centuries that I have in other parts of the world? Then yes, yes, I would I would have to. The, the, the way we've done this is they connect via a link to one of the sensor nodes that we deploy inside the network. So we actually deploy nodes which track uh, vote propagation. Uh, and that's how we see which nodes are the, originating the, the cryptographically signed packets. And then we uh, add this to our private book, so we make sure not to propagate this address to anybody else, right? So, but then mm -hmm. we can see the packets are coming from this validator node. We're confirming, yes, that's the validator node. We're all good, like, and we're happy to change that score for you. But the score was already good based on the sentry nodes. So this is where I'm saying, like, there is a there is a give and take possibility. Uh, <clears throat> is uh, is that uh, you know, if you want to reach a higher score and your validator node is indeed in a place which would raise your score, we're open to actually doing some extra work on our side and making sure that you're that's accounted for. It. But that's your call, right? It's not it's not something we're forcing you to do. Yeah, exactly. And I'm set, uh, sharing here a Discord observatory Discord and guys, uh, please talk directly to observatory because this is not Absolutely. our call to, to to judge that it is right or not we are we are we see what what uh, observatory uh, smart delegation app is show, showing us there's a, there's another question in the chat uh where someone says the only info available on the p2p interface is your node id and your config moniker so that's right and uh you know people don't have rpc nodes open but um, let me expand a little bit on our tech so we've developed a custom version of tendermint uh we forked it and we build a new type of node, which we call a sensor node. That node is receiving the uh, the cryptographically signed block signature votes that are being spread out across the network. So I don't know if you know how the, cost, the, the Tendermint layer works. There's a flooding algorithm. So if your validator sends a vote, say I'm signing uh, this, this block number, whatever, 19 million, 400,000 something, it will send it to its neighbors and this will send it to those neighbors right and our nodes are connected to a massive number we have several uh, sensor nodes um, particular inside chain for energy and we're connected to a bunch of nodes and that particular cryptographically signed vote comes to us from many places and we consistently track who is the first sender of the vote and we make an effort to connect to all those locations uh, that we see on that we crawl the network all the time and our sensors are like moving their tendrils all over the place. So we don't care if the RP, you can lie in the RPC, uh, you know, for all, for all I, my, I care. I want to know which node is in fact the originator of the crypto packets. And if that node goes down, no more crypto signatures, right? Because that's the entry point into the network. So if it's two centuries, 
we'd like to have both sentries inside the observatory because that's the public interface between your hidden validator and the network. If both of those go down, no more packets unless you go and change the configuration on the validator and reconnect it to the network. So this mm -hmm. is the, this, this is what the sensor nodes are trying to assert. So if you tell us, yes, but there's another O behind those, and you know, I can prove to your sensors that that's, actually that's the one that's sending the packet first, clip. perfect, okay, fine. But you don't have to. We'll just, you know, uh, we're happy looking at those sensor nodes because that is the public interface that where your packets originate to the rest of the or, or, and, and are moved to the rest of the network. And yeah, by the way, we know that like we scan these networks all the time and we know people change their RPCs. Like the, some some nodes are claiming their archive nodes, they're reporting a block height of zero. I know everything, but you know, when we check, it's not there. So uh, changing RPC nodes for some security reasons is also understood. Uh, and, and there, of course, you can put a firewall in front of your system, uh, sorry, a proxy in front of the system, and you can change whatever you want. But we're not relying on that. We the sensor nodes are are just really scanning where the packets are, uh, how the packets are flowing in the net, on the P2P layer, mm -hmm. as part of consensus. Martin, frankly speaking, I didn't know that you are doing, you know, so 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 uh, so much work inside the chain. I, I thought that it is like rather looking at the blockchain from you know, uh, outside, uh, but you are part of the infrastructure somehow. And, you know, yes. uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is great. Uh, great job, well done. We run all over the world. We're, we're seeing that mm -hmm. we're seeing, we're, we're scanning packet flow from like various places from Sydney to San Francisco. So we're mm -hmm. really scanning the network from various locations and triangulating also, right? So, so there's, a, there's a lot of work involved in this. There's a data science pipeline. Uh, there's an analysis system that then you know infers. Okay, you know these nodes are the ones that are originating the packets. Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of work. That's true. Yeah, it's amazing. Cool. Really, really good. Maybe, maybe we can uh, have have one more question. I know like there's also like some some Turkish validators in here, uh, and in Turkey, in 20 minutes there's the the fast breaking. And yeah. Yeah, guys, last question, because uh, actually we are over time. Uh, I don't want to have, uh, uh, it's too long. It's Friday uh, evening almost. Uh, <laughs> we should relax and, uh, you know, thanks Martin, Zach for, for you know, you know, sharing your, your time uh, with, with us. Guys, last, last question. So, so maybe if, from my side, uh, I would say, guys, this is like the it just beginning. Uh, it, it, not everything is per perfect. I I know, but uh, but we will improve from quarter to quarter. This is this is the idea, and uh, so I believe that the next quarter will look a bit different, like, like this one. Uh, so let's fi final finalize the initial stage. Uh, to have the delegation done and uh, this is my objective for 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 uh, the next two weeks uh, and then uh, we will try to inform you what we will uh, uh, what uh, we will score uh, what will be important from our perspective right now let's say we are more focused on the community uh, uh, topics like social media and so on because this is, it helps us to to uh, that more people knows about uh, what we are doing uh, and once we have more traffic or users then we will move forward to the public goods and we'll more score public goods and then uh, maybe you know the, the con code contribution and so on so the the the, the, the program will will evolve uh, and uh, so I hope so that we can meet uh, next year, more or less at the same time, and uh, we can conclude what we achieved uh, during this year. Okay, Dominique, you want to say something? <laughs> no, 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 I think that you, you, you said everything here, so there's nothing for me. <laughs> okay, okay, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a nice uh, weekend and thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much for having us. Have a good weekend. Guys. Thank you very much.